Hey everyone, Tim Streifler here with Divi Life, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started using the Divi Bars plugin. Now, if you are on the Getting Started page for Divi Bars, you, you've probably noticed the Quick Start instructions. This is geared towards people that just need a little bit of a nudge in the right direction, but want to figure it out as they go. Now, this video tutorial that you're watching now is going to be a lot more in depth. I'm going to show you how to download, install, activate, as well as activate the API license key for Divi Bars, and then show you how to install a template and create your first Divi Bar and set a trigger. So that's what we're going to go over today in this tutorial. So uh, first things first, let's go ahead and download it. So to do that, come on over to divilife.com, go to the My Account section, and uh, you're going to go to API downloads. You can see here it's a little confusing, I know, uh, but the download for Divi Overlays, our other plugin, and Divi Bars is in API downloads. And so you're going to come over here and just click that download button there, and that will download the file. And then the next thing we're going to do just while we're here is go over to the regular downloads tab and download uh, one of the Divi Bar layout templates. So we're going to download the Divi 3.0 template here. Just click that link right there and that will um, download it. And it'll, It's a zip file so it needs to be unzipped. And then yeah so let's come on over here to the site. Now you're going to install Divi Bars just like you would any other plugin. So go to plugins, add new click upload plugin choose file now uh, just make sure that you are trying to upload the Divi bars Divi dash bars dot zip file that you downloaded from API downloads and not the dot JSON dot zip because that's not going to work hit choose install now activate and then it's going to prompt you to activate your license key so click on that, and it's going to take you to the Divi Bars API key activation page. Now we're going to go ahead and grab the API license key. So come back over to Divi Life and click on API keys. And you can't see this. I have it covered up because this is a live key that I use on my client sites. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Head back on over, paste it in there, and you could probably copy your own or type your own email, but I'm just going to copy it and hit save. And it'll tell you how many activations you have left. I have the unlimited license, and so that's why it shows this very large number here. And a quick note here, uh, it's going to show you the sites that you have licensed, and so you can remotely delete them. So, for example, if you accidentally delete the site, if you were it was a test site and now it's using up one of your licenses, well, you can come here and you can delete it. So you have full control over that right from your Divi Life account. Okay, so now we are going to go to Divi Bars, add new. And we're going to give it a name just like you would any other page or post. Oops. Divi bar one. Then you're going to click the purple use the Divi builder button to activate the builder. Now at this point you have two choices. You can start from scratch, design with a blank slate, uh, or you can import one of our templates. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. And uh, sometimes it's easier to start with a template rather than have to start from scratch. And um, that's true with um, anything <laughs> on the, the Divi Builder. And so, um, and then another thing worth noting, if you do start from scratch, you'll notice that the Divi Builder by default adds margins and padding to the, the rows, uh, sections, and modules. And so if you don't want it taking up half your page, then you'll need to remove those. Um, and so we have that already done in the, the layout templates that we provide. And so, okay. Let's go ahead and import. Now, we already downloaded it, and it's important to note that we're going to import it right here, not in the Divi library. It won't work if you try to import it there. So just click that up and down arrow icon, click over to the Import tab, choose File. Now, I already pre-unzipped this, 
but you'll need to unzip this file, otherwise it will not import. It needs to be the, just the .json, not the zip file. Click choose, click import, and then it's going to refresh the page here. And as soon as that page loads, you'll see the Divi bar layout template. And there it is. Now, before we customize it, I'm just going to show it to you on the front end, then we'll show you how to make some changes. Now, if we just hit publish, nothing's gonna happen because we need to tell it how to display. And so we need to set an automatic trigger. Time delay. Time delay is probably the most common and uh, that's probably the, the best one to get started testing with just so you can see it on the front end and then you can change the way it displays later. But uh, yeah, we're gonna set time delay, zero seconds. Obviously, if you set five seconds, it's gonna put on a delay of five seconds. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna put it at zero. And usually that's what I recommend when you're testing it, trying to get it just right. That way you don't have to wait for it to load every time with the delay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit publish. Now, I'm gonna show you here on the front end Refresh that page, and you'll notice here it is the Divi 3.0 pretty much exactly. And so we've recreated this as a template. It's a great basic typical promo bar uh, for um, any variety of, of applications, and so it's a great one to get started with. Now, a couple things I, I want to note if you go to the site in the same browser that you're logged into, it's going to put it above the admin bar. Uh, and so just note that that's not going to show up on the front end of the site because um, the user is not going to be logged in. So let's go back and oops, I clicked edit page. I'm going to go back to the Divi bars. And so let's go ahead and make some changes. So we're gonna customize this just like you would a normal Divi page. I'm gonna put Divi bars and all the new features have arrived. Get it now and click save. I'm gonna leave the button as is, just learn more, that's fine. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the color of the background. Now, instead of a typical background color, I'm going to remove that and I'm going to put a gradient. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it these default colors, but I'm going to make it left to right. I'm going to hit save. And then, oh, I, I want to add a shadow to the section as well. So in the section modules, go to design, scroll down, until you see the new box shadow settings. I'm just gonna use one of the presets here. That's gonna add a cool shadow effect underneath it. Now, one thing I do wanna note, we do have the background settings here that will add a background color to the, uh, the Divi bar, but uh, you have more control in the builder itself. And so I typically recommend setting the background color there. But for some reason, if you're using uh, multiple sections for, for whatever and you want an overall background color, then you can set it here. So you have that option. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click Update. And then let's go ahead and refresh this. It's not gonna look great because the colors are gonna be off, but you can see the gradient you can see the drop shadow underneath it, which is pretty cool. And it stays fixed with the fixed menu. I can close it, have that option. And uh, you'll notice right now that it reloads on every page, even if I close it. And that is because we haven't turned on a cookie yet. So to do that, you come over here to the close button customizations and where it says close button cookie, you can use the slider to set a cookie. So what this means is if you set it to 10 days, that means if the user closes it, it's not going to reappear for them until 10 days later if they come back to the site anytime after 10 days. 
So that means if they come on your site and they read it, click on it, whatever, close it, it'll go away and it's not gonna pop back up on when they click over to the next page. You don't wanna annoy them. And so that's what the close button cookie. One thing I do wanna say though is it's typically best to set this after you have everything dialed in, you have it looking the way you want because um, otherwise it'll install the cookie on, on your browser and then you won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and then I'm gonna show you a trick, the best way to, to test it. And that's to open an incognito window. So that means it's not gonna save the cookie. And I just wanna make sure that I did save this with the 10 days, okay. Okay, so refresh this. Okay, so I'm looking at it. I wanna close it. All right, now I come over to the About page and you'll notice it's not going to reload. And that's because of the cookie. Now I can close this, open up another incognito and it should display because it just cleared the cookie. It didn't save the cookie in the incognito browser. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna just remove this down so that we can continue testing. But that's how you use the close button cookie. All right, so another thing I want to show you is uh, a few more settings. So you have the option of displaying the Divi bar on all pages, which is what I had it set on, or you can set specific pages. So if you wanted to just put it on the pricing page or just the home page, whatever, you can do that, add multiple pages there. And then also you can have it, um, by default, it, it will be disabled on mobile, but you can uncheck that so that it will show up on mobile. And then I'm gonna show you a quick trick here because you'll notice with the Divi Builder, it shrinks down on mobile. Divi 3.0 and the all new Visual Builder has arrived and it shrinks down and it, it gets shortened. And so you could do that with Divi bars as well using the built-in uh, mobile customization tools that Divi has. It lets you hide and, and, and show or disable different row sections or modules. And so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the entire row just to, to make it simple. And I'm gonna go over to the advanced tab and my top one is gonna be the one that shows on desktop, but I'm gonna disable it on phone and tablet. Hit save. And then the bottom one is the one that is going to be disabled on desktop, but it's going to show on tablet and phone. So I'm not gonna check it for those. And then I'm gonna come over here and make this text shorter. And I'm just gonna say Divi bars has arrived. And that's all I'm going to say. And then I'm going to make sure that, okay, that's unchecked, update. And let's go ahead and you can see it takes up too much screen real estate. So we're gonna refresh here. And you can see now the text is a lot more manageable. It's similar to the Divi 3.0 where it just shows um, that short sentence. That way you're not taking up too much vertical screen real estate on your, your website. So that is how you do some mobile customizations. And then the last thing I wanna do is just go over a couple of additional settings. So for example, you can position on bottom. And it'll show it on the bottom instead. And you don't see the shadow because I had the shadow set to show on the bottom, so it's covered up. But if I wanted to show one top, I can go to that one there. And makes it stand out a little bit more. You can see the shadow above the white. 
and then I'm going to change that back really quick. Change it back to top. And I'm going to say do not fix to top and show you what that is. So that's going to make it so it will s stay at the top and scroll with the rest of the page. And so that's handy if you want to show a notice when someone lands on the page, but then you want it to, to scroll with them and, and not keep bothering them as they're scrolling down the page. So pretty cool, and that works well too if you turn off the, the Divi Fix nav as well. So that is it for this getting started tutorial. I hope this was helpful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and open a support ticket, and you can do so by coming over to the customer support page. There's also a link in here, get support and open up a support ticket and uh, we will help you out. There are more templates that will be added to the download section, so feel free to check back there as often as you'd like uh, to get new, uh, new layout templates, and we're gonna be designing some custom to, to match different, um, different uh, layouts that we're gonna be producing as well. So, all right, thank you, bye.